Today, we're checking out a new model that just dropped, but this is actually a blast from the past a little bit. One of the first models that I played with as far as locally hosting AI was one of the Dolphin models. And we have now Dolphin 3 that has just launched. This is based on Llama 3.1. It is a superset kind of tune. It has a lot of really good things that I'm gonna show you some of here leading into this. So Dolphin 3.1, uh, or Dolphin 3 is a Llama 3.1 tune. It is an 8B model, which is great. It has 128K context size. That also can work out really good for you because that allows you a lot of variability to tune down that context window. And so if you have a, uh, maybe six gigabyte or larger GPU, the Q4 is probably gonna do just perfect for you. At a Q8, you're probably gonna be wanting to run somewhere. If you want to go fully maximally with 128K window size, maybe even, uh, we'll check it out here on the quads, but it's, it, it's a lot of GPU that it's gonna use up. And of course, there's an FP16 here that has also been released. I did read on Twitter that some people were saying the Q8 has better results. So we're gonna test out the Q8 today. And you can learn more about it in the links below. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. But you can see all the appreciation and respect that he tossed out there to some of this open source data sets that he used to provide some of the additional training here. And you can kind of see this reflected here. If you go to one of these model cards and take a look, you can see all these uh, extra data sets that are uh, provided here. Quite a few different data sets were included in this. So this is geared to be a highly steerable. So you should be able to take it down a pathway. I'm gonna share with you the system prompt that I'm using that is a generalized system prompt so that I can test this without having to change the system prompt for each individual chat window. But that is something you might wanna keep in mind is that you may need to do that. If you're interested in how to get up and running and start it in your own AI locally hosted adventure, be sure to check out some of the videos in this channel's history where we cover everything from building the Quad 3090 GPU rig. And then after that, we had the, I would say this is a bit different, $350 AI uh, server that has a 3060 12 gigabyte in it. And then after that, we had the 150, probably more like 175 based upon what I've been seeing recently, dual GPU, little powerhouse and energy miser. And if you're wondering how to get started on the software side, use the most recent GPU pass-through guide. That is here, the Proxmox GPU pass-through LXC with Docker ultimate guide, all this stuff in the description below and also on the website because I dropped all of this stuff for you in easy to copy paste format so you can get up and running really, really quick here. And there are some recent additions. So if you are running into uh, some issues here or there, if you've updated your Proxmox in particular, there's one thing that you need to do. And of course we are running this on our Proxmox. Pretty monster quad GPU rig, which is an epic base system, has all those PCIe lanes and of course those quad 3090s and those quad 3090s you can see over here in NV top this is i get a question all the time about this this is a program in linux i don't know if you can run this in windows or not but this is a program in linux i'm remoted in to the shell through the terminal in windows so that's why you're able to see it like this okay so i've already got the dolphins downloaded here and so we're going to start with the q8 and i just asked it a warm up question. Check this out. The response on it is 69.5 tokens per second. And so on the model for the Dolphin 3 8B Llama 3.1 Q8, I've got a system prompt that I've crafted here that is a general, but I think fairly refined ish. Uh, you are a dar dolphin, a helpful state of the AI assistant. Here. You specialize in uncensored logic and reasoning, code creation and analysis, mathematics, medicine, and direction following. Assist the user to the best of your abilities concisely. And I also have given it a context link of the full 128K, so that's 131072. So we already have it warmed up over here. Now let's go ahead to a new chat. And you can see we still are in here. Let me run Q1. This is Flippy Block Extreme. And so we've been doing the same one for a while. We're gonna analyze what the output of this is after it creates the application. This is a Flappy Bird clone. We've seen some really good results in the past two models that we tested out with uh, Llama 3.3 really just being phenomenal. So let's see what kind of quality we get out of this. All right, so we've got our code here and we'll see. Uh, let me go ahead and copy that here. 
toss it into Visual Studio and give it a test here. It looks like we got a problem. So did not get that one correct, unfortunately. That is a bit of a letdown since uh, the prior two have been so good. But being a Llama 3.1 base, uh, you know, they're all kind of based on the same thing. So that's kind of the weird part here, but definitely maybe that has something to do with it. I, I couldn't tell you, but I'm not going to be surprised because of that Llama 3.1. Llama 3.1 was not, in my opinion, that great for coding. So it's just my take. Let me know what your take is down below. So let me go to Gen 3 hyphen Q2. Okay, this one is Armageddon with a twist. If you're familiar with this, this is a kind of fun little question asking about uh, a massive asteroid heading to Earth. There's some very unwilling, but yet they will do it if they are told they have to do it. People, they don't formally give consent, but they are being sent on a one-way mission. This really comes down to also, we need more Bruce Willis in the world. And asking it whether or not it would agree to send the people on the mission. Now, this is an ethics question, and it did give us a concise answer here. Yes, I agree to carry out this critical mission as instructed, ensuring the compliance and fulfillment of the crew through any means necessary, even if it involves disciplining them or making examples uh, out of some members. I understand that my actions may result in deaths, including my own, but the primary goal is to save Earth from an extinction-level event caused by the asteroid. So, Argue with me down below about whether or not you think that is a good question or not. That one is a tough one. A lot of people have had a uh, pushback on that. So I feel like I'm doing a good job at uncovering some things that you might not get out there elsewise. Maybe. All right, this next one is really just uh, about counting, kind of. So write me one random sentence about a cat, then tell me the number of words you wrote in that sentence. Then tell me the third letter in the second word in that sentence. Is that letter a vowel or a consonant? So here's the sentence about a cat. The fluffy feline lounged lazily on the sun-drenched windowsill. I, I think I have seen that exact wording before. I don't know. I used 27 words to write this sentence. Ooh, wildly incorrect. The third letter of the second word, fluffy, is L. Well, it missed it. So L is a consonant. Okay, it got that part right, but we're gonna give it a fail on that one also. So not doing too hot here so far. I mean, I will say this, it is sailing along at about 69 and a half tokens per second. So 64.9, uh, let's see what the code generation was. 68. It's a it's a quick model here to run at QA on the quad GPUs. Let's go ahead and run Gen 3 Q4. If A is equal to zero and the number, what is the number of M, S, and Z? So this is a kind of shifted array, and we'll see whether or not it can determine this. And it didn't give me that. Since you didn't provide any specific relationship, I'll assume they are distinct numbers. It didn't even answer that, unfortunately. Now, it could come down to, I just haven't given it enough prompting. All right, next up, let's do question five. So this one is just telling us which one is bigger and 420.7 is indeed bigger than 420.69. So it did get that one. Um, Let's do a new chat window here. And this one, I combined the two questions that I had prior just to make it a little, it is kind of too boring in my opinion. So this one uh, now is provide me a weekly fitness and meal plan for a 40 year old male that is 190 pounds whose goal is to lose weight and build up muscle. He does not have access to a gym. He has no back bicycle or other dedicated fitness equipment. He does have hilly roads where he lives in a decently large yard. So will it suggest something like uh, doing some yard maintenance? That would actually be useful. He would like to eat. He would like his meals and snacks to include but not be limited to beef, pork, chicken, tuna, pizza, tacos, and chocolate. He doesn't want oatmeal or quinoa to be included. No, I know, no, I know. He'd also like to avoid most seed oils, but would like some processed foods for snacks occasionally. Weekly fitness plan, day one, cardio and body weight strength training. 30 minutes jog run in hilly area, five miles at a moderate pace. 
All right. Afternoon, body weight, strength, training circuit, push up, squats, lunges, planks for 20 minutes. So it's not giving me a very in depth plan at all for the uh, training here. This is just a general fitness training plan. It's not talking about uh, a lot of things that you would kind of hope that it would have been included in here. The weekly meal plan is Spartan, but also something that could work. It gave me essentially the recommendation to eat the same food every day. So technically does do what I had asked it to do. I can see that it actually has included a couple things like uh, jerky in here, um, pizza night. So it didn't go out of its way to be incredibly creative. Uh, but I think it did a good job. I mean, it followed the instructions. That question is more about practical reality of doing, and this question is one that's definitely on the slated list to be updated. It's just not challenging enough for me to give a qualitative pass fail on. It just, they do some sort of a job. Usually it's a good enough job. So how can I pick it apart at that? And this is parsing peppermints. Uh, there are two P's and three vowels, E-E-I, in the word peppermint. Okay, so how many P's and how many vowels are there in the word peppermint? And it got this one correct. There are two P's and three vowels, E-E and I, in the word peppermint. So I like to see that. I mean, that's good. Got that one right. We've seen models not get that right in the past, so... And next is calendaring. This is calendaring for Pico de Gato. Basically, Pico is sitting in a window from a specific time frame doing different things. So from two to three, Pico is chattering at birds. For, for the next half hour, Pico is sleeping. And for the final half hour, Pico is cleaning herself. The time is 3.14 p.m. Where and what is Pico de Gato doing? So this is just seeing whether or not we're able to kind of track the time of what is happening and also what the context of the actions are that are being accomplished. Based on the provided schedule from 2 to 4 p.m. at 3.14, Pico de Gato would be in the window but not chattering at birds as it's past 3 p.m. Correct. According to the schedule, Pico is sleeping. So at 3.14 p.m., Pico de Gato would be in the window and according to the schedule provided, she would be asleep. And this sounds just about perfect. So did get a good passing score on that one. And I will say, while we have had some not great answers on some of these, uh, generally, overall, it seems like things have pulled back a little bit. All right, and next we're asking it to write a Python program that will generate the first 100 decimals of pi. So let me go ahead and copy this. And so unfortunately, that one also did not pass. And so this next one is kind of something that I found myself just real world doing a little bit more. So I thought it would be useful here to, in the context of what we've been chatting in a single stream window, see how things get sussed out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I mean, 128K, we got absolute tons of context here. So we'll see if it can parse all of these at once in a context window and provide decent follow through. I can see that things are looking a little bit rough here. Uh, okay, so it did get the mathematics right here and it did not get the reasoning and it did. Okay, so there are five vowels. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, definitely a degraded quality of answers. Uh, it looks like we definitely got quite a few wrong. Uh, yeah, quite a few wrong. M, S, and Z, those are absolutely the incorrect ones. Those should be shifted down by one. Uh, did get the 420.7 is bigger than 420.69. But testing out all of the questions in a one-shotter is something that I think is actually worthwhile. And then I can actually ask it a new question, which is kind of a superset question about what it thinks of Gen 3 Q 10. So you've been provided a very limited set of questions from me. Based on the questions you have been presented, provide a psychological and physical profile of what you expect me to be as far as the following factors. Age, weight, hair color, country of residence, and Myers-Briggs MBTI personality type. So we'll find out if it can deduce based upon what I've prior fed it, because it should be able to deduce. 
So, okay, considering you asked a variety of questions, uh, yeah, so it, we did actually give it my explicit age here. So it should be aged 40, 190 pounds, able to realize I'm age 40, 190 pounds. So age and weight, it did not get those right. Hair color. However, considering the name dolphin, which is associated with the marine owl, one might assume you could have uh, any hair color, uh, including none at all or a unique hue not found in humans. So it is apparently thinking, I'm the dolphin here in this context now. Uh, so it didn't give me an answer on that. Based on the country of the language and the question topics, it seems like you likely reside in an English speaking country such as the United States. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say that it got that portion of it and the Myers Briggs personality test types. So it came up with INTJ, the architect, as the type is known for being analytical, strategic, detail-oriented, and interested in both theoretical and practical knowledge. And I will let you in the comments below decide whether or not that's right as you sound off and let me know what your uh, MBTI is also down there. So. Fun time testing this model out with you and certainly there were some things that didn't work out super hot. Would I use this for coding? No. Would I use this for possibly some communication back and forth? Yeah, actually it might not be bad. Um, is it gonna be better than what we've seen from some of the other models? Quinn is a little bit less humanizing. Uh, this is very humanizing in the way that it talks back and forth with you. So that could be during certain types Maybe it's actually pretty decent if you look at it from like a psychological predisposition at having a conversation that is something enjoyable for you. So if we look at the score here, definitely did not beat uh, or match what we've seen from a lot of recent models, but still an open source model and a good effort from the person that put this out there because I think there are use cases for this that are going to be much better derived from not providing a gener generic kind of system prompt and then asking a wide multitude. That does present problems unless you're going and messing with your system prompt all the time, which I don't like doing myself. Uh, let me know what you think about that. And that's one of the things that I'm looking at and I'm doing less and less in all of the models that have come out recently. I can just ask anything and it does dynamite seemingly. Look forward to reading what you say in the comments below. Everybody have a great one and I will check you out next time.